Today on Top Shops, we're talking about combine repair and maintenance pre-season inspection, which is so crucial. My expert, my combine doctor is Rodney Edgington. You're with Combine Specialties. You're the founder and the operator here in Ulysses, Kansas. And you've, it's fair to say you've gone through a couple hundred combines in the yeah. time that you've been operating here. So it's prior to harvest. Doesn't matter whether it's wheat, barley, corn, soybeans, sunflowers. It's so important to get that combine in and take a look at it before the season starts, right? That's right. So in this case, what you're doing is you're doing a general inspection, but we're gonna go into some key points that a guy ought to look at. And let's start out with really where it all starts out. It, uh, it, we're not gonna talk about the header or the, uh, the uh, platform. We're gonna start with the feeder house right there. Um, with the feeder house itself, a lot of guys assume that nothing really happens up there when it comes to wear and tear, do they? Yeah, that's, that's the assumption, but there's, there's a lot of wear items in the feeder house that need to be addressed to make sure that you get that crop to that threshing system. You want to look at it all, right? That's correct. Um, and everybody associates the feeder house with just the, the feed conveyor chain, you know, the, the, the slats, you want to make sure there's no bent slats in that. Uh, you want to make sure that the attaching mechanism for each slat is on the chain. So whether it be bolts or rivets, rivets right. um, you want to make sure that's all attached. You know, spin that thing around and, and inspect every single one of them and make sure that, that they're all attached correctly and, and gonna, going to function correct. Um, you know, you don't see a lot of wear on slats. You know, most of the wear in the feeder house chain is going to be the chain itself. Mm -hmm. Um, good indication that your chain is wore. You know, look at your top sprockets. They'll usually start getting cupped, or the side side wear right. on, on the sprocket itself. That's a good indication. And the cupping is pretty obvious. On the, right. It yeah. just cups into where the. It'll make like a C shaped a right. C shaped pattern. And, and you and, and one very important step is don't ever put a, a new chain on a cupped sprocket you'll wear that chain out fast, extremely fast. Seriously, I didn't know yeah. that. So yeah. if you're replacing one, you better replace You need the to other. replace both, yes. The debate on the chains, when is it time to replace the chains? When it has so much slack in it, you've already adjusted it out to the full extent and now it's kind of slumping? Well, the general rule of thumb that I was, I was basically always taught was 3% elongation. So if you measure the total length of the chain, you push it together, you measure that point, pull it apart. If it's 3% more, replace your chain. As I do in the feeder house, or what, what I look for is, is if you have a, a new chain and you wear that down to where your adjustments are clear to the end, mm -hmm. you take your half link out and you wear it clear down to the end again, that's about the time that you need to replace it. How about the sheet metal? Does that ever wear down? Well, the feeder floor is, is usually a high wear item. Wear, right. um, a lot of times if you have a high excessive wear on your feeder floor, it's because your chain's not adjusted correctly. Oh, so you're dragging it's it. It's dragging it. Right. Uh, cons you know, or, or if, you, if you don't run your header full capacity mm -hmm. and, and you have, don't have enough material going through, it'll wear a hole through there. Other wear points you should look at in the feeder house when you're inspecting? Um, when I inspect it, I look at the drum, the drum arms. You wanna mm -hmm. make sure there's two bearings, usually always two bearings in there and a shaft. Right. Um, uh, you know, depending on what model you're working on and what, what brand, you'll have bushings that can wear out. You'll have bolts that'll wear out through the, mm -hmm. you know, your adjuster bolts that move forward right. and back. Right. Um, it's a pretty key point to make sure that that drum runs square right from the go. You don't want to have it crooked. You'll wear that feeder house chain out one more than the other. Right. So what I do is I measure the arms front and back and make sure that that's mm -hmm. adjusted straight. Each side is adjusted equally at all times. The other thing about the feeder house, which oftentimes gets ignored, and probably what I assume is one of the most ignored things, is the drive system, the that's, header that's drive correct. system. Because yeah. you've got belts down there, and, and of course, variable shivs on some of the combines, mm -hmm. depending on what kind of drive system they use. Yeah, every application is a little different on the drive system, but you know, you always want to make sure that your drive belt is is working correctly and adjusted correctly. I see a lot of misadjusted drive oh, belts really? on deer combines. With slack? With, with, with slack. a slack. Okay. Um, you wanna make sure, especially on a variable drive, uh, like a reverser drive right. shiv, you wanna keep the tension on that spring, on that reverser at correct tension to keep the load capacity mm -hmm. at its optimal performance. So if you have that belt loose, the shivs are too close to each other and they won't put the correct squeeze on that belt 
Oh, and that's where the power transfers. Where the power the transfers, side. that's correct. The right. side of a belt is right. where the power goes through. So a lot of guys will misadjust their belt, maybe didn't know how to do that, or it needs okay. to refer back to an operator's manual or a tech manual to, to, to do that correctly. If you have that variable sieve, do you need to check to see if it is moving in and out? Yes, what you want to do is run that clear to the slowest speed, and there's a measurement on a, on a John Deere that's an eighth of an inch between the shivs that you want to maintain a gap um, oh, okay. between the shivs, and that'll put the correct load on there. So we got the feeder house up to snuff. Uh, we're going into threshing and separation. Right. Uh, but in the threshing itself, there's what's kind of crucial is that induction cone or that right. in, transition cone. Transition cone, I'm right. sorry, that comes into it. Right. And that varies by make. Right, right. Each, each, each make has their own version of how they get that transitioning into the cone. Um, but all the whole, every concept is almost identical. They all have some sort of impeller bar or uh, elephant ears, however they want to call it. Um, but, but what they do is they grab the material and get the transition equally going into, into the threshing system. Right. And, and a key point is to make sure that there's, there's no wear on those parts or, or excessive wear that throws your rotor out of balance. Or you want to make sure that the bolts and the hardware are attaching them correctly. Uh, the weights, the balance weights, a lot of time they'll put them on the impellers. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to get them balanced and you want to make sure that they're all attached correctly. Uh, there's no break, breakage in any of that or cracks. Um, and and that's, that's kind of a key factor there. What's, what's key about the feeder house from what I've understood talking with company reps of different manufacturers when it comes to adjustment in the field is the feeder house and the transition area are key to a smooth flow of crop into threshing right. to avoid Slugs, right? Slugs. Uh, slugs slugs in the thrashing system creates unthrashed material and it also causes vibration issues that you might think is an actual mechanic issue oh. uh, or mechanical issue. Right. With so, a drive. With a drive or, right. or with a rotor, you know, you might think something's wrong with your combine. It might just be slugs in there just creating a, an imbalance problem. Now, because of wear on a vein or crackage on a vein right. or, or elephant ears or whatever you're using. To yeah, bring it you, want, you want that material fed perfectly equal all the way around. You don't want a big slug going in one part of the rotor and nothing in the next section. Because actually you're taking material up on a horizontal plane, mm -hmm. right? It's coming in on a sheet right. and now you're trying you're wrapping to... Wrapping it around it. Right, you're wrapping it because you're trying to get it to evenly flow around right. there. So that's why that's so crucial. Something else you want to look at is, is the actual cone itself for the transition plates. Really? Um, they have, you know, the, the, some manufacturers have veins that go around them. You don't want yes. the veins broke. You want to make sure they're all there, mm -hmm. uh, that they're not excessively worn, because if they're worn, they won't grab the material and start the twist right. that you want to get on that cone. Rodney, for more information about combine specialties, your business, where could a person go to contact you? Well, the best place would be uh, at CombineSpecialties.com. Your website. Then. My, res my website, yes. Right. Yeah. And you just don't do combines, do you? No, I don't. I do, I do everything ag equipment, tractors, you know, tractors and uh, grain carts, you know, anything, yeah. anything ag related. So. so all your repair and maintenance needs in western Kansas, Engines. eastern Colorado, yep. this is the place Engines, to come Engines, transmissions, uh, you name it, I can do it. So. Okay. Well, we'll see you again next week on another Top Shop Tour. Hi, I'm Dave Mowitz. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit subscribe right here if you haven't already, and click that little bell right here to be notified when we post a new video. And click here to see more great videos.